During World War II, the Channel Islands were invaded by Hitler's German forces for almost five years. In Guernsey there was 13,000 troops at one point and thousands of organisation tut slave workers. These slave workers were used to build hundreds of different German fortifications around Guernsey. To build the tunnels they had to dig out thousands of tons of solid granite and many died in the process. It's rumoured that their bodies were just thrown into the setting concrete. In 1944, 12 tunnels were under construction and two others were completed. Here are the tunnels in Guernsey which can be found easily. The Talbot Valley Tunnel did not even get to go underground. All that was built was an entrance tunnel about 80 feet long up to the rock face behind and it ends in a heap of rubble. This tunnel was planned to be a long straight tunnel with a short branch off to the side at an angle and was going to be used as a munition store. The Le Havre to Val de Terre's tunnel was almost completed. It goes in a slight curve and has a short branch on one side. This is now blocked by part of the tunnel roof which has collapsed in. It was intended to be used as a naval supply store but was only used to store sacks of flour. This is the Le Havre entrance and this is the Val de Terre's entrance and are both in private gardens but easily seen from the roads. This tunnel runs under St Saviour's Church and has one entrance in the valley below and one entrance in the lane called La Rue du Grange which was to become the museum entrance. St Saviour's was going to be the second largest tunnel complex in Guernsey. It was intended to be used as a ration store but ended up being used as an ammunition store instead with various small tanks, carts and trailed equipment being kept there as well all of which were still there after the war finished. Then one day a Mr and Mrs Traisnell bought a house above the tunnels and discovered that they owned a section of the tunnel including one of the entrances. Around the mid-1980s Mr Traisnell decided to open the tunnels as a museum. He then ran into difficulties when the church warden said they did not want people walking under the church or graveyard and blocked off the tunnels where their boundaries lay. Another landowner above also decided to do the same. Eventually the museum was abandoned and the exhibits are still inside today, rusting away. Guernsey's underground hospital is the largest tunnel complex and has a floor area of 75,000 square feet and used some 15,000 tonnes of concrete and was not finished. 23 slave workers died during its construction. It has one unfinished section and an unfinished third entrance shown in brown on this map. It was made to accommodate 500 patients under normal conditions and double that in an emergency and the hospital only ended up being used for six weeks. After the war, eight tons of drugs and other medical supplies were found in the storeroom. It was opened to the public as a museum on the 29th of July 1954 and is still open today. This tunnel was built through the headland below part of Fort George in 1861 for a proposed promenade to join Soldiers Bay and Fur Main Bay behind it, but this idea was eventually abandoned. 
When World War II came along, the Germans had a ready-made tunnel, and they modified it by building two tunnels to the side. This was one of the two Guernsey tunnels which were completed, and this one was used as a temporary auxiliary munition store. For many decades it has been used as an aquarium and amusement arcade. Le Valette is next to the aquarium and was built to be used as a fuel store for refuelling submarines. It has four main tunnels with a corridor running along the back of them and an unfinished section. There were four large fuel tanks in there, each weighing 60 tonnes empty, and held 30,000 gallons of fuel each, adding an extra 120 tonnes to each of them. After the war, each of the fuel tanks were found to be full of fuel. The tunnel entrances were level with the road, but after three of the fuel tanks were removed in 1946, they were blocked off and a large earth bank built in front of them. In 1987 work started on turning them into a museum. They had to dig down through the earth bank to reach the entrance. This entrance tunnel was extended to protect visitors from possible rock falls above and the museum was finally opened in August 1988.